many political watchers say, one year is not long enough to assess any elected office holder's performance. For Kogi State Governor Yahya Belu, that is clearly not the case. Aside the fact that Governor Belu has already done a four-year stint as governor, where he made his mark clear to the people of Kogi State that he is a man of words and actions. After a successful four-year tenure, Governor Yahya Belu was re-elected during the November 2019 election and was sworn in to begin his second four-year term on the 27th January 2020. One year has quickly rolled by, but it has been a very eventful year. Anyone seeking public office without challenges should look elsewhere, as such a situation does not exist. Governor Bello's challenges began the same January 2020 that he was sworn in with the election tribunal proceedings that challenged the result of November 16, 2019 governorship election that earned him a second term of office. As challenging as the proceedings were, Governor Bello was never in doubt of his success as he knew he was the people's choice, which if allowed to prevail, we see him emerge victorious. And that is exactly what happened. The election tribunal first affirmed Governor Bello winner. The decision was challenged. The appeal court also declared him winner. That ruling too was challenged. The matter was finally put to rest in August 2020 by the Supreme Court, where his re-election as the governor of Kogi State was reaffirmed. This wonderful resounding statement from God Almighty through the justices of the Supreme Court means a lot to me and the good people of Kogi State and indeed the youth and the young generation of this country. It is a call to serve and do more for our people. This is not an end in itself, it's a process. It's a process that is going to put us up for more responsibilities that lies ahead. By the special grace of God, we will continue to do more for our people in the area of security, infrastructure, fighting corruption, and to ensure that we lead with fear of Almighty God. I will continue to do my best to ensure that across the divide and across the party line, we continue to unite the great state and the people will continue to benefit and feel the dividend of democracy. It wasn't only on the official front that Governor Bello had hurdles to cross. He had to face challenges in his personal life. His mother, Hajia Hawau Ojo Bello, whom the governor described as the pillar behind his success, passed away on March 15, 2020. May her soul continue to rest in peace. Days later, event which shaped the world like never before happened. COVID-19 came calling. Nigeria, like the rest of the world, were caught unaware by the virus, which left sickness, death, and a series of socio-economic ills in its wake. The COVID-19 spread like wildfire in many countries across the globe. Nigeria was also affected by the pandemic, though not in the same dimensions experienced in other countries, such as the United Kingdom and the U.S., United States. These countries hurriedly imposed very degrees of movement restrictions, including outright lockdowns to cope the spread of the disease. Nigeria's federal government did the same in the federal capital territory, Abuja, Lagos, and Kanu states, and it is wisdom left other states to determine their COVID-19 control measures. This was where Governor Yagyabelu displayed his administrative survey. He never hid his disdain for lockdowns, seeing it as an imprisonment of the people and his stifling of schools and business activities. Instead of following the trend of states who also rushed to impose sit-at-home directives on his people, Governor Bello turned to the National Center for Disease Control's preventive guidance of social distancing, wearing of face masks, and the reduction in the number of large gatherings. With these measures in place, it took a long time for NCDC to record against Kogi State of its first COVID-19 case, and even that was controversial. 
the respected chief imam of Kaaba, Sheikh Abubakar Ahmad, who is in his early 60s, along with one of his sons, were the purported index cases from Kogi State, declared on May 27, 2020 by NCDC. They were whisked to Abuja from Lokoja on the third day and declared COVID-19 positive a few hours later. The chief imam, an upright and outstanding man who is only interested in the truth, confirmed what we have known all along, that he did not test positive for COVID-19 and received no result of such diagnosis. Neither did, his, neither did his doctors at the National Hospital Abuja, where he was confined, advise him of it. The cleric maintains that he suffered from nothing beyond complications from an attack by bees. Medical conditions which predate the COVID-19 pandemic and stress from travels associated with his work. Till he was released, he was held in conditions which allowed him to interact with visitors. A team from the National Center for Disease Control came to Kogi State to verify the no case statistics from Kogi State and called for a statewide test of the resident's COVID-19 status. Even though this did not go down particularly well with the state government, it was prepared to allow the NCDC to have its way as long as its team members were prepared to undergo a period of isolation to ascertain their own COVID-19 status before worrying about others. As leaders, the burden is on us to refuse panic, fears, confusion, pandemonium, and act intentionally to create a semblance of normal life for our people while taking adequate precautions to keep them as safe as possible. And all of advertising, publicizing, marketing, and glorifying COVID-19, let the market it. We don't need that product in Nigeria. Once again, I thank Mr. President, I thank the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, the Federal Ministry of Health, and of course, the NCDC, for all they have done and will continue to do until this pandemic is contained and crushed. In particular, we thank Dr. Chikwe Ihekwazo, the Director General, NCDC, for sending us a fact-finding and validation team today. They have arrived, they said, and we sincerely welcome them. Once the team is through with disinfection and allied NCDC protocols for persons arriving from high-risk location, we will interact fully with them, trusting that we can work together to enhance our chances of keeping COVID-19 free. We also hope that we can get answers from them on some of the concerns expressed earlier in this address. My good people of the state, the same ladies and gentlemen, thus far God has helped us. We assure you again that we have never hid it we are not hiding, nor will we, will we ever hide any case of COVID-19 in Kogi State. Please ignore any statements to the contrary and treat it as nothing but malicious and dangerous instigatory propaganda, which government is already handling as appropriate. What we are simply doing is following the laid down protocol, the procedure of, of NCDC and the World Health Organization. You will recall that even the Chinese doctors who came or who were invited to the country 
for one technical assistance or the other, or the other, just like they came for one technical assistance here now. They were quarantined for 14 days in order to ascertain their status because they were coming from epicenter. And remember, these our visitors are coming from epicenter as well, which is Abuja. And from the daily you know, briefing that we received from NCGC and PTF, that a lot of their officials, doctors, workers has been infested. They came to assist us, just like the Chinese came to assist us. So since they have come now, we are going to work with them, but after observing their own rules and regulations. Because here, from the record given to me, we are COVID-19 free in Kogi State. That is what I received from the chairman of uh, COVID-19 and Lassa Fever Squadron Committee and also from all the necessary bodies. So if anybody is coming to help us here, then we must know their status. So it's either in that quarantine, that's number one, and also we have uh, our sample collector here. We have, you know, gotten some sample collectors from the NCGC too. Governor Bello took time to explain the circumstances to the people of the state and assure them that the action he took was in the state's overall interest. In the circumstances, we cannot manufacture cases in order to be counted among the same which have recorded same. In fact, as a governor, I hear there are benefits for having COVID-19 cases in your state. Well, I am definitely not interested. In addition to direct medical efforts, we have made sure that our people and their properties are adequately secured in their homes and when they venture out to seek for livelihood, effective state security infrastructures are on permanent high alert. We determine early on not to shut down the Kogi state economy internally. Our people should not have to travel to Abuja or neighboring states, all of them high risk to scavenge for food because we lock down the state's economy and with it, there are sources of livelihood and income. This was a calculated risk at the time it was taken and we did receive some bad press for it, but thankfully, it has now paid off. The visiting team refused, and after a spat of some sorts, had to return to Abuja. Though, Governor Bello was like a lone voice in the wilderness with the way he handled the COVID-19 saga in the state. It will not be out of place to say that subsequent developments have vindicated his actions. Unlike in other states, people were not unnecessarily kept indoors, and businesses, especially the small scale, and subsistence traders continued to ply their trade with no adverse consequences. Governor Bello clearly demonstrated to Nigeria and the whole world that he is a man of his people. And we have seen the devastation, the lockdown. This is a systematic lockdown. Remember, there are other children and students that have been at home for over nine months. <laughs> Those children don't, don't even know they are students any longer. Some are not even interested in going to school again. And we know what education is in the life of the people, especially younger generations. When they are being deprived now, the crisis we are facing at hand now is, will be a tip of the iceberg. Because Moving forward, these are children that have access to smartphones, laptops, iPads, internet, the social media. And I can assure you that high percentage of the users of these new devices don't use it for productive purposes. When they are locked back at home, what are they learning? What are they practicing? Other than crimes and criminality. Situation 
we are being pushed to a situation where what will visit us in this country, what will visit us in Africa, and what will visit us across the world will be more worse than Boko Haram, bandits, and Amrobi put together. A situation where you as a father, as a mother, as a parent, as elders, as seniors, will no longer be safe in your house. Your words will no longer be safe living with each other in a house. Because our educational system is being crippled, crumbled, and destroyed forever. Time shall come when you will ask children to resume school. They will tell you they are no longer going back to school again. It is better we produce graduates and look for where or how to get them rather than deprive them. COVID-19 or no COVID-19, the state still needed to be governed with major decisions which will impact on the life of the people to be taken. Inspections of ongoing road projects, many of which were commissioned during Governor Bello's first senate, were and are still being carried along. Some of these projects have been completed and some at advanced stages of completion. Unemployment is a challenge to all governments across the globe. To reduce unemployment in Kogi State, Governor Bello has continued to support all Project World Bank programs introduced to the state and come up with other employment-based innovations. We have two session segments of the program. One is Bello Keep under Kogi KS uh, for World Bank grants in partnership with the state government. The other one is our normal ongoing JEEP program under the federal government NSIP program. Uh, based on our target, like I said, we have, had, we have about 13,000 targets for JEEP. And we have about 10,000 or even more based on what comes, it's an estimate for now. So we're looking at between 10,000 to 15,000 targets of beneficiaries under CARES, which is Belo Keep program. In the first half of 2020, Governor Belo signed a flurry of key bills to law. Notable among them is the bill for the establishment of a tertiary institution to be named Confluence University of Science and Technology. Consequent upon the signing of the bill, immediate action was taken to ensure the proposed university to be cited at Osara in Kogi Central meets the requirements for accreditation which has already been granted by the National Universities Commission. Admissions are set to commence any time from now, and building of structures is ongoing. Governor Bello described the university coming on stream as a dream come true. This is history in the making. It is often said, and I pray praise, that the journey of 1,000 miles starts with a step. This is one of the early steps in achieving and realizing the hope, the wishes, and aspirations of the founding fathers of our dear state. Today, we have just signed two very important bills into law. Law establishing a confluence University of Science and Technology, acronym COSTEC, OSARA, Kogi State, and the Reference Hospital in Okeno, Kogi State. We all know the importance of education. Without education, we would not be where we are today. And not just education, but a specific and specialized type of education. We all know that what drives the world today, aside education, is science and technology. The world economy is gravitating 
from resource-based economy to knowledge-based economy. Today, we have laid the foundation. We're going to have one of the best universities, not only in Nigeria, not only in West Africa, not only in Africa, but in the world. We are going to devote resources, time, and attention in the building and development of this all-important institution. This will make the second state-owned university in Kogi State and the third university in Kogi State. The legacy has been laid by one of our great founding fathers, late Prince Amukokar Awe, who laid the foundation and built the Prince Amukokar University in Ayuba. The same way was able to achieve that legacy we of today, we are equally following that footstep. May God be pleased with him. Amen. Indigens and residents of the host community of Sara are equally as excited as the governor. So we don't know where we are to hide our face. Though so many, uh, many of times we wrote to uh, grant us uh, audience to come and uh, thank him, but no way. But if you still say to until where we call, and it might be too late for us, really, we just get up this morning with the cycle. If we are told we are not allowed to go, uh, come in, we will be there and dance at the gate and show our appreciation to our amiable governor. Thank you, sir. So we pray to God Almighty that God will grant him long life and prosperity. Amen. And our prayer, he has said it, and so it shall be. The head sector, the Kogi State Government under Governor Yahya Bello's watch, also made giant strikes. Government approved the transformation of the Zona Hospital Okeni to a 600 bed referral hospital with two general hospitals, one at Ajakuta and the other at Kegubeki, also added to the growing number of quality healthcare facilities. An expansion project of the specialist hospital Lokoja is among other ongoing healthcare projects. The importance of regular power supply in the growth and development of any given geographical entity cannot be overemphasized. But for the people of Kogi East, it is a different story. Many communities there have been without electricity for decades. That is all about to change as Governor Bello has launched what has been popularly tagged Operation Light Kogi East. The people are excited knowing things are about to take a dramatic turn for the better. The project, which is at its 90% completion, and contractors say it should be ready for takeoff soon. So as we speak, about 25 transformers have been installed. Like in Ida, we have Ajaka has been done, Ajaka has been done the Golawa has been done, transformer installed, the lines have been uh, constructed, the, the low tension line have been constructed, then we have up in Nachalo has been done, we have uh, Akpatega has been done, then we have Aloji is in progress, uh, Itobe is in progress, then even across towards Angba. Where we are now, I think in another two, two or three weeks, we should be totally done. The state's road network is being continually improved, expanded and upgraded. 
the Kogi State Government has also added some federal government's roots in its ongoing upgrades. Palliative measure that's supposed to come to Lokoja Ganaja was split into eight sessions. Two has been awarded. We are waiting for the remaining six to be awarded. So the two that is awarded, they will mobilize to site and commence work immediately. So this one, they are commencing work as soon as possible. The remaining six, by the grace of God, will fall into the first uh, quarter. So, and uh, to make sure we drive this um, directive to logical conclusion, the Honorable Minister directed that the State Minister of Works and the Federal Minister of Works should work together to ensure proper supervision and make sure that there is good delivery of uh, work done along this uh, line of uh, directive. So I think uh, it is a good thing coming to the state. From 500 units, there's one face there, and before the runabout there, there's another face there. So this one is to commence immediately. From Ganaja up to, uh, because Ghana, federal government roads start from Lokoja, Ganaja, Shintako, up to the Kino Alanyamba, it's federal government road. The maintenance of uh, Ganaja Road is on federal government, not on the state. However, we have been carrying out a lot of palliating. That is what is sustaining the road as we speak. It is impossible to achieve such feats in public office without getting noticed, which explains why Governor Bello has received numerous awards and at different times has been called upon to put his knowledge and experience to use in areas other than his management of Nigeria's confluence states. Beside the torrent of accolades received for demystifying the politics of COVID-19, Governor Bello was declared 2020's most gender-sensitive governor by National Council for Women's Societies Nigeria. In the last quarter of the year 2020, Governor Yahya Bello was appointed chairman of the Security Committee for Governors of the All Progressives Congress from the North Central Geopolitical Zone a position he holds in a way he introduced an all-inclusive policy of maintaining peace and security in Kogi State. Still in the area of security, Governor Bello's efforts were recently hailed as an example for others to follow by the Nigerian Army Special Forces Battalion. Provision of the vibrant young governor of Kogi State, who detests crime, and have always been rendering helping hands to nip crime not only in his state, but across the country at large. I dove my heart for Governor Yaya Bello. The support the Special Forces have been receiving from him, if all governors could emulate. In terms of providing strategic information, I think the peace we have been yearning for will soon be close to us. Early January 2021, Governor Yaya Bello commissioned 441 Special Police Constabulary to support other security agents to fight crime and criminals in the state. The government of the Federation on recognizing the community policing module decided to train 16 persons per every local government in the Federation. And these people were selected, they were screened, and they were ready for training. But we were given an open check that any government that can sponsor additional persons to go and train outside the 16 that the federal government has selected was free to do so. And our governor, being a security friendly governor, did not hesitate to key into it. <laughs> While we were making arrangements to go for training, instead of the 16, 16 per state, he made the number to be 21 per local governments. The implication of this is that we are going to have a more secured environment. This also presented an opportunity to take our able men and women with an employment opportunity. And today, you have been employed. 441 able men and women to come and secure our territory. You know, as at 21st, 27th of January 2016, when we took over this government, Kogi State used to be the hub of criminals. With the effort of this government, the people of Kogi State, the support of their president, and all the security agencies, 
Kogi today is the safest state as far as Nigeria is concerned. We have seen these efforts in the various indices as presented by various rating bodies. We urge you that as you are coming in today to come and strengthen the security mechanisms in Kogi State and support all the various security agencies, we are urging you to double your efforts. In the discharge of your duties and responsibilities, you must abide by all the ethics, laws, and the do's and don'ts of the Nigeria Police Force. I will ensure that by the grace of God, your remunerations and your welfare remain utmost and it will be the first line charge from our resources. I, I will equally urge you to ensure that every inch of your local government is secured. As mentioned earlier, the last 12 months had their challenging moment as the Kogi State Judiciary was rocked by the death within a matter of days in June of the State Chief Judge, Justice Nasir Rajana, and the President of the Customary Court of Appeal, Justice Ibrahim Shoeb Tadugan. Three days to the end of 2020, the Governor sworn in Justices Henry Olusi and Bayo Oluwoshegun to replace the deceased judges. He also sworn in four other judges to man the High Court and the Customary Court of Appeal. A day after the Supreme Court ruling upholding Governor Bello's re-election, the state also lost His Royal Majesty Dr. Michael Idako Ame Oboni II, Eta Igala, a beloved monarch whom Governor Bello held in high esteem. Even during the euphoria that trailed the court ruling, news of the Reverend Monarch's death left the governor in a visible sober mood with his celebration low key. He was a great leader a father who gave us all the necessary support before we came on board and in this administration. He's a unifier. He's a man with so much respect and regard. We're going to miss him. We love him, but we know that God Almighty loves him most. We're consoled and condoled by the fact that he has left and lived a legacy behind a life worthy of emulation. In line with its new direction agricultural revolution for food security, the state government purchased 100 massive Ferguson tractors with complete implements and spare parts which were distributed to the 21 local government areas to beef up farming activities. This explains why Governor Yahya Bello was the recipient of an award of recognition for agriculture development in Nigeria at the Second National Commodity Alliance Forum held in Abuja by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. Governor Bello is a chartered accountant, so it is probably no surprise that Kogi State displayed deep transparency and accountability in its financial management and score 100% in the 2019 annual performance assessment APA of Nigerian states under the State Fiscal Transparency, Accountability and Sustainability, a $750 million competitive program of the federal government through which states are rated and rewarded for meeting any or all indicators for improved fiscal transparency, accountability, and sustainability. In another report, Kogi State was listed among states with decreased domestic debt in the year 2020. And for the year 2021, Governor Bello has passed the sum of over 130 billion naira as the state government's budget, tagged budget of acceleration development. Governor Bello says this is in line with his commitment to continue to implement realistic financial policies that would guarantee prosperity for the people through prudent and transparent management of resources. We have just signed into law with effect from 4th of January 2021 the state money bill we target budget of accelerated recovery. While the Kogi State House of Assembly target budget of hope. We are all 
right in towards the same direction. What we do simply in Kogi State is to ensure that our budget reflects reality. We all know that the government of Kogi State, under my leadership, we practice what we do, we do what we practice. Whatever is in law, we try to execute. We don't promulgate law or enact law or sign bills into law and it remains vague. Whatever is in law, we try to translate it into performance. With Governor Bello's commendable handling of the last COVID-19 pandemic still resonating, the Kogi State Chief Executive has some advice for Nigerian leaders amid fears of a second and more drastic wave of the novel virus. Today, COVID-19 is a disease that is 99.9% recoverable. The infection, if anybody ever contacted it, and it is without any comorbidity, diseases existing in you, the chances that you recover from it is 99.9%. We should not use the 0.1% impose more hardship on our people. We are extending these hands of fellowship to all of the 10 states that are bordering cohesive. That is, and whenever you are locked down in your states, and you are tired of lockdown, come to the It appears more people will take Governor Bello a lot more serious this time around. Like COVID-19, Nigeria was rocked by the NSAS protests, championed by youths demanding an end to alleged police brutality, among other demands. The protests were hijacked by alleged hoodlums who wreaked havoc across the nation, Kogi State inclusive. The Central Medical Stores and the Agriculture Development Project Warehouse in Lokoja were among several facilities looted by the hoodlums and goods and equipment worth tens of billions of naira were lost. In spite of this, Governor Bello and members of his cabinet made true statements aligning with the youth's genuine yearnings for a better tomorrow, but disassociating themselves from looting and promising to deal with those behind the mayhem. This was also viewed as an example of statesmanship worthy of emulation. Though. It's been only 12 months of Governor Bello's second term of office. It has no doubt been a very eventful period. Other key members of the Yahya Bello's administration give their account of the last 12 months working with the youthful governor. I wish to start by congratulating His Excellency Alaji Yahya Bello on his one year in office for the second term. We've never had it so good. Yes, I'm privileged and honored to work with him in his first tenure as his secretary to the government of the state. But this one year in office has been so wonderful, especially with the women of Kogi State. His Excellency has passed the 35% affirmation action in the state. We want to say thank you to His Excellency for bringing the women of Kogi State into the limelight for delivering us from political bondage and giving us a voice. To the glory of God, I am the secretary to the government of the state, a woman. The head of service is a woman. The acting vice chancellor of Prince Abaka Howdy University is a woman. The provost of College of Education Technica is a woman. The provost of School of Nursing and Midwifery is a woman. A woman is also the director general of the State Pension Commission. All the vice chairmen in the whole local government, 21 local government areas of Kogi State are all women. The council leaders are all women. And His Excellency Alaji Ayabelo has keyed into this 
because he wants his government to run well. And that is why he's giving women their rightful positions. We cannot thank you enough and we congratulate you. Our prayer for you is that the governorship seat is a stepping stone for a higher level in Nigeria. Your voice will be heard in nations of the world. We're praying and begging God to please allow you and give you the heart to run for presidency come 2023. This first year, as you are aware, is full of challenges. The year that witnessed a health challenge to all Nigerians, COVID-19. Though we, we are not all that affected because His Excellency, not that I didn't believe in that sickness or COVID-19 as the case may be, he believed that the way the people are going about it is not proper. Today, we go around the, we go around the state, you see so many projects going on, despite all the challenges I've mentioned, road construction spread across the three central districts, the central, the east, and the west. So I always advise you that we criticize the government to come to Kogi State and see things for themselves before they talk. I want to use this forum again to wish my staff in government house I want to commend them, I want to appreciate them for their cooperation. Without their cooperation, we would have recorded the resources we have. Health, education, what have you for the benefit of the entire Kogai. It's passionate and very ready and really appreciate the cooperation of the entire uh, Kogai, you know, along the, uh, across the divide. His um, Excellency, Alhaji Ahaya Adoza Bello, has been funding the commission to ensure that um, we put smile on the faces of the senior citizens of this state. On a monthly basis, he never failed to fund the commission and um, we have been paying gratuity. Prompt, there is prompt in payment of gratuity, then pensioners um, monthly um, fund is also coming. We pay them monthly and within this period we have paid full and final payment to not less than 200 pensioners, more than 200 pensioners. Year 2002, gratuity has not been paid. So we have a lot of gratuities outstanding. So when His Excellency came, he ensured that on a monthly basis he's bringing money for uh, payment of gratuity. And he instructed that we should pay across, irrespective of the year of retirement. He is very fearless. He is self-confident. So he will tell you as it is, irrespective of whatever you think, he doesn't give a hood. So I think that is the person to take us to the promised land in this country. His Excellency should come as the president of this nation because of one security, then unifying us together. Participation of Kogi State in the 33rd National Art and Festival in Jos, where Kogi State got two gold medals and was adjourned as the best enterprising state in the whole uh, federation. Governor Yayabelo epitomizes humility, loyalty, and what have you. He's loved by all and sundry, especially on his stand position in concerning COVID-19 pandemic. Even our avowed enemies are in love with his stand and his position. That is like any other sickness, that too much attention should not be given to the uh, pandemic so that attention can equally be shared and concentrated on other sectors of uh, the economy. 
Governor Yaya Bello is a, a, a trailblazer in the sense that if you look at uh, a governor that doesn't look at the back in giving opportunities to the youth, he's one of it is a trailblazer. He has also set the pace for empowerment of women. And I think this is going to go a long way because they say you should build a, a, a woman, you have built a nation. This second tenor has added no weight by giving opportunities to women. Yes, on behalf of all of us at the Kogi Enterprise Development Agency, uh, I congratulate His Excellency Alaji Ayabelo on his successful first year in the office. Uh, it is in our prayers that uh, we wish him all the best. We wish him that he will get, uh, you know, to achieve greater heights. And most importantly, we're looking at a vision, a, a bigger uh, vision. Uh, now we have the tagline from uh, GYB to BYB. Of course, we are all very passionately uh, involved in this uh, mandate. Governor Bello during campaigns ahead of his re-election did promise to up the tempo in the provision of democratic dividends during his second tenure of office and with what we've seen in the last 12 months he has been definitely true to his word and with three years left of his second term of office it is becoming clearer by the day that better days lie ahead for the good people of Kogi State. This package is brought to you by the Senior Special Assistant to the Governor on Electronic Media, Honorable Avoy Umwanko. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Confluence Chronicles, for subsequent information and happenings within and around Kogi State. <music>